Now that we've talked about our covalent bonding, getting our names, and then also discussing uh, how to draw out our uh, molecules, I want to look at the actual shapes that our molecules are forming. And we are going to talk about polarity. Um, your book goes much, much more in depth into polarity than uh, I'm going to discuss here. Uh, really, we just need to know kind of the basics of our polarity of molecules. This is section 5.8. So again, we're just going over uh, actually both of these concepts in a very general way. I'm not going into specifics. So if you are um, not taking my course, if you're taking another uh, chemistry course, um, I would suggest that you look for another video that's going to be a little bit more in depth. So this is a very brief overview. Um, because this is so brief, uh, this is a section in your book that I would not suggest reading. Um, just look at the pictures um, that we're uh, going to be talking about. Okay. Uh, all I want to talk about in terms of shape is the uh, electron group arrangement. And what this is, this is going to be the basic shape of our molecules. Your book goes into what's called molecular shape, um, and that's going to uh, definitely be a little bit more specific of the shapes. But we're just, like I said, we just want the basics. Okay? And there is more to this story, um, but for us, we don't need the, the whole story. We just need the start and the end. That's all we care about. Okay, so our electron group arrangements, we want to focus on three of them. There are more, but we just want three of them. And the first one is called linear. Very easy to visualize. We have basically uh, three things that are involved, okay, either an atom, uh, these circles can rep, well, not circle, but not, but these circles can represent uh, either an atom, so an element, or uh, a lone pair of electrons. Mm -hmm. And they're just, they're in a line. They're in a straight line. An example of this we've already seen uh, would be the HCN. Mm -hmm. So here is that circle in the center, and then we have two circles on either side. This molecule is going to be in that uh, complete line, linear fashion, linear shape. Our second electron group arrangement is called trigonal planar. Okay, so triangle, three-sided shape. Planar, meaning it's a plane, uh, so a piece of paper is a plane, okay, it's flat. Uh, so we have essentially a flat triangle. So we're going to have an atom in the center and then either three atoms okay, around or one of these atoms uh, or two of these atoms could be um, a lone pair of electrons. That is that is a possibility. Okay. An example of this shape, okay, notice right, this is kind of our triangle here connecting those outer atoms. Uh, an example is the last Lewis structure that we wrote. This COCl2. And I wrote it like this because that was kind of how we uh, started with our Lewis structures where we kind of work on the four sides. Really a more uh, accurate picture of this would be to make everything going equal kind of all the way around, so getting that triangle feel to it. So notice I'm, I'm not even bothering with putting those lone pairs 
of the electrons around the oxygen and the chlorines because they don't they don't uh, contribute to the basic shape of our molecule. It's that bonding on the central atom that's important for our shape. So if we have three things around that central atom, it's going to be trigonal planar in shape. Our third shape is called tetrahedral. And this is actually the first shape and the only shape that we're going to talk about uh, that's three-dimensional. So drawing it not in three dimensions, this uh, is what we would see for our Lewis structure. So we're essentially going to see something on all four sides of that central atom. And remember the outer circles here, they could be an element or they could be a lone pair of electrons. Okay. Um, so we actually, we haven't seen an example, we haven't drawn out an example of this, uh, but a very simple one for us would be um, CH4 or methane. Carbon has four valence electrons, so we'd have four dots on all sides. Hydrogen brings one dot to each side of the carbon, so we'd end up with a Lewis structure like this. Which, this is a good Lewis structure, excellent Lewis structure, uh, but it doesn't suggest our three-dimensionality to it. Um, so really how we would draw this um, and this is a little bit more than what we need, but just so you can see, um, we actually have two hydrogens in the plane of the paper. So these are all in a, in a line, in a flat sheet. Then we have one hydrogen bond coming out at us, which uh, we typically represent as a wedge. And then one going away from us, which we represent as a dashed wedge. Okay. Again, this is beyond what we need to know. I'm just kind of showing it to you so you, in case you see it. Um, here is a, a model, so a build a kit of a, a molecule. This is the tetrahedral shape. Okay. Um, I'll try and put some links on our Moodle site that has uh, some shows the three-dimensionality so you guys can kind of click and rotate and see uh, what's on there. But notice this says some three-dimensionality to it. It's not just a, uh, a cross. Okay, it kind of looks like a cross there, but if I twist it, you see that some are going that way, some uh, are going the other direction. Okay. So what I'm representing in this drawing here is I have a, car, a hydrogen going up okay, and then a hydrogen uh, going to the right. Then I have one coming out at me and one going away from me. So uh, this hydrogen here is coming towards the camera. This hydrogen here is kind of going away from the camera into that, into the other side of the piece of paper. Okay. Linear and trigonal planar, these are, are flat molecules. They don't have any three-dimensionality to them, just tetrahedral do. Okay. All right, let's quickly talk about polarity in a molecule. So we've already talked about polarity in individual bonds as a difference in electronegativity. When we look at polarity in a molecule, Um, what we're doing is we're considering all of the individual bond polarities, so looking at uh, each two atoms, comparing them. Um, but what we want to do is we're, we're just looking for the general picture, okay? So uh, some general rules for us, and again, these are very, very, very basic. If you are looking at specific polarity, you need to find a more specific video. Um, for anyone who's taking my course, who is actually taking this as their lecture material. Um, these are the rules that you can go by. If you have different atoms around the central atom, it is most likely polar.
If there are lone pairs on the central atom, then it is also most likely polar. So let's look at uh, an example. Actually, you can look at these examples. Here for methane, okay, we have all the same atoms around that carbon. So this is going to be nonpolar. Um, up here for carbon, okay, we have chlorines and we have oxygen. So this is very likely to be a polar molecule because we have different atoms pulling. Okay, essentially, you can kind of think of multiple tug of wars happening on this carbon. Uh, one side is going to be stronger than the other. Uh, so there could be, uh, this could be a polar molecule. HCN, we have hydrogen around the carbon and we have nitrogen. Uh, definitely two different atoms. Uh, so this molecule is going to be polar. So let's do some examples, give you something to, to try out. So which of the following molecules are polar? You can pause the video if you want to give it a try. And what you want to do is draw out your Lewis structures and then kind of make a guess of what's going on around the atom. Is it going to kind of win a tug of war on one side? Are there different atoms around there? Or is it being pulled equally? So CH4 was actually the example above. Um, we have the four hydrogens around that carbon. So they're going to pull all equally. So this is going to be nonpolar. If we change out three of those hydrogens and make them fluorines, we're going to look like something like this. Now we have different atoms around that, uh, around that carbon, so this is going to be polar. <coughs> carbon dioxide uh, was an example that we looked at in the previous page, and its Lewis structure looks like this. We have the same atoms on either side of the carbon, so we have the same pull, equal and opposite. So this is going to be nonpolar. And kind of think of this as an equal tug of war. HCN. Again, we just looked at this example. This is going to be polar, and that's because this is an unequal tug of war. All right, so go ahead and try some QMP. Um, again, looking at just this in the, in the most basic way.